Okay, thanks for checking in. Another video from me, and this one is going to be on some new gear. Um, you guys know right straight away, I am an unscripted YouTuber, if that's what you want to call me. I do not script things out. I kind of just talk to you from the heart. So if you enjoy that kind of content, that's the kind of video and content you're going to find here. So like and subscribe. For the past year or so, I would say that my primary camera has been Sony's A7 IV. Um, I have used this camera for everything under the sun. I have used this camera for product photography, for food photography. I've used it for video work. I have used it for wedding and family events. A lot of weddings with this camera. And I've also used it for some personal projects. Um, I went on a few vacations with this camera. I took this vacation to Bermuda with my wife and just captured um, content a mixture of video and photography. Um, I am not a videographer, for most of you know that. I am primarily a photographer, but this camera just has that hybrid nature to it, and I really enjoy it, and I love it. But I did find it just a little bit too big. And, you know, Sony cameras right off the bat are not huge, but again, it's a DSLR-style body, okay? It's that huge viewfinder, um, you know, just a large body overall, and then adding zoom lenses to it. I only brought one lens, which I'm actually filming on right now, and that is the Sigma uh, 27 to 70, I think, or 28 to 70, I believe this is. Um, so it wasn't the 24 to 70, it's the 28 to 70 or 75, 2.8. Let me see. Yeah, 28 to 70, 2.8. Um, and it's a great lens, uh, a little bit smaller and not as expensive, and it served me well, but it was still a bigger form factor. For most of you that know me, I shoot Leica. Most of you know that when I shoot personal projects on vacation and travel, I usually shoot Leica. I did a, a whole thing on shooting my Leica Q2 in Arizona, and I take this camera everywhere with me. I love the Leica Q2. I love everything about it. I love the form factor. I love the fact that it is a rangefinder style camera, but it does have an EVF and it does have autofocus. Um, I like the high megapixel count. It allows me to crop in and gives me that much more flexibility when it comes to composing photos. Now you can even shoot different aspect ratios with this camera. You can shoot uh, focal lengths rather. You can shoot 28, you can shoot 35, 50, and even 75 millimeters. Now you do lose some pixel count, uh, and it is a fixed lens camera, meaning that, you know, when you have 28, you have 28. That's what you're stuck with as far as a focal length. Um, now, albeit, it is an amazing 28 millimeter lens, and this camera is just fantastic. But, you know, what if there was a way to kind of get that Sony a7 IV feature set, but within a smaller form factor and a smaller camera and have the ability to change lenses. And that's where the Sony a7C Mark II comes in. Now, as you can see, this is a very, very close form factor when it comes to camera sizes. You have right here, 24 millimeters, 28 millimeters, but you have the a7C and you have the Leica Q2. Um, I gotta tell you that this is a lot lighter and it is smaller overall. So now getting into the Sony a7C Mark II. Why did I pick this camera? Well, like I already told you, I am a huge fan of the a7 IV and I use it for everything. It is my go-to camera. Now I have an a7R Mark IV, I have an a7S III, which I'm filming on right now. Um, I do have an a6600. Uh, crop sensor camera, and like I said, I picked up the a7 IV, and there was a few reasons for this. Number one, I love the fact that this has a new AI algorithm autofocusing system in it. The autofocusing system in this camera is fantastic. I've never seen anything so confident when it comes to autofocus and so dead on accurate. It locks on, it doesn't let go. Um, when it sees what it needs to see, you can be guaranteed that it is going to capture it perfectly. Um, I like the small form factor, okay? I like the fact that it is a rangefinder style camera, something that I love and inspires me 
so much when I'm out shooting um, my personal work. I get, I lose inspiration when I use DSLR style cameras, okay? I shouldn't even say DSLR because we really don't shoot them anymore. Most people are shooting mirrorless, but that traditional viewfinder in the center body, something about it for me just, when I use that type of camera, I'm like, okay, I'm at work. I'm doing work projects. When I use range finders, to me, that screams creativity for me. It was the same way with the X100V. It was the same way with the Leica Q2, even the X-Pro series when I used uh, Fujifilm X-Pro1, uh, X-Pro2, and the X-Pro3. And now, um, I, that's the reason why I probably bought an A6600, a Sony A6600, because I love that, that form factor. And, you know, I know they have the A7C, the first version, um, but I held off on it because I went with the A7 IV because it offered me a lot more. But now, with this camera, this is perfect for me. Um, yes, there are some caveats. There are some things that you lose. Uh, the viewfinder isn't as big and it's not as bright as the A7 IV. But the trade-off for me on that was I really don't care because I use the viewfinder when it's bright out and I use it to compose and for exposure valuations. I'm not using it to really judge my photography in terms of um, pixel peeping and stuff like that. I just need to see a clear image. I need to know that I'm um, exposing correctly for it and that I'm composing in the right way. So for that, the viewfinder is just fine. And it's nothing bad. I think it's $2.36 million. Listen, I'm not a specs guy. For those of you that have tuned into my, um, my videos long enough, know that I am not a specs guy. Um, so go read the specs somewhere else, link in the description, blah, blah, blah. I'm here to tell you how the camera feels when you shoot it. Um, so I love that. That is not a problem for me. Um, the flip out screen. I love the flip out. I would like to see that new screen that was on the A7R uh, Mark V. I think everybody is saying the same thing, but listen, you still have, you know, you still have that selfie screen that flips and rotates and closes in the back. And actually the good thing about that is because it does, you know, kind of protect it. Um, and you know, what I mean is, you know, you get that hard plastic on the back cause it rotates into itself. And for a camera like this, that is going to be well traveled. That is a positive for me. The rear screen, your standard fare. I think it's 1.9 something million pixels. It's fine. It's just like anything else. It's good enough to view what you need to view. Good enough to judge your framing and your exposure and your color fidelity. Is it going to be like blow you away? No, but you know, again, this is a camera that is gonna sacrifice a few things, but give you a lot more. The main benefit is the size. I mean, the thing is small. It's a very, very small camera. It has the new AI algorithm. Yes, you do You lose uh, double card slots. You only have a single card slot, but you still have all your um, standard ports like your, uh, like your microphone, you do have your mic ports there, and you do have, um, you know, your other ports down here at the bottom, your USB-C and your mini HDMI and your um, earphone jack as well. So you do have an earphone jack. But when you use a camera like this, and it has all the latest and greatest stuff, and you can use these little Sony lenses that they have, okay? These are like their little, their little small, uh, compact lenses. They're little G lenses. This is the 24. I also have the 50. I love the 50. I actually had the 40 when I first started shooting Sony again and I sold it. Uh, I think I'm going to buy it again. I think it's just smart to have that uh, whole system line up. They're all the same size. They just have different focal lengths and they're very fast and you know they can click. Um, you can take the aperture ring and you can make it clicky or unclick it for video work uh but they're fast they have nice uh focusing motors in them and the other thing that i love about this camera is you know i i've talked about photography because like i told you i am primarily a photographer but the other wonderful thing about this camera is that this is a very very competent video camera okay you have 422 10-bit internally you have 4k 24 30 you do have 60, but the 60 does have a crop. You can get 120, but your 120 will now bring you down to uh, 1080p. But for most people that are using this for any kind of vlogging or any kind of uh, B-roll or just hybrid slash content creation while out and about, 
24 frames a second is great. 30 is a little bit better if you want to kind of maybe have more of a cinematic look. And 60 is not too bad with a crop. A lot of cameras crop at 60. I don't really care. A lot of people are making a huge deal out of, oh my God, it's 60 and it's got a crop. This sucks. I'll never buy it. Who cares, man? Just stand a little farther away. I don't mind 60 on a crop. I really don't care about that. It doesn't bother me. It does have a nice switch right on the top. Nice hybrid switch. So you can see right there, you have your camera, your uh, video, and you have S&Q because you do have S&Q mode on this as well. You do have that ability to have that uh, multi-interface shoe on the top so you can run your Sony mics right on top and go completely wireless, which is another thing that I plan to do uh, when you want to use this camera as a vlogging device, simply held straight out in front of your face and vlog with it. It's very small, very compact. Touchscreen interface is great. And it does have that new Sony, um, you know, menu where you can see, you know, some of the, some of the stuff on the side here that you may need to access and everything's touchscreen, which is great. I love the fact that touchscreen now enables you to touch menu options within the camera. A lot of these other Sony cameras prior to this series of camera, um, you had to go into the Sony menu itself and access the menu. Now you can touch right on a screen and get that. I also love this new uh, menu that is reminiscent of the um, cinema line. So you have this, this quick menu, you have quick menu one and you have quick menu two, and that gives you everything that you may need um, when it comes to photography as well as uh, videography. Um, so I love that. It does have S-Log3, it does have all the picture profiles, and it does have S-Cinetone, picture profile 11, which is what I am filming on right now on the A7S 3 And the great thing about this is, is that all these sensors, whether it's the A7S Mark III or the A7 IV or the new A7C Mark II, they all are very cohesive and they all look the same. All the picture profiles and all the coloring looks the same. This A7S 3 picture profile and S Cinetone looks the same as it does on my A7 IV as my A7C Mark II, so I love that. But this was uh, a really, really smart buy for me because not only does it give me another backup camera, um, you know, when I am shooting weddings, because uh, I was shooting the A7 IV with the A7R uh, IV, and awesome to have an A7R IV, but an A7R IV is a little bit of a overkill when it comes to wedding work. It's great for you know, um, landscape photography or product photography when I wanted to have a lot of resolution, but I don't need that kind of resolution when I'm capturing families at a wedding or even family, you know, mini sessions and whatnot. I've been shooting mini sessions like crazy. So for me to have a second body, a smaller body, this is great. Um, am I worried about the single card slot? I've never had a card fail, knock on wood. Never had a card issue. Um, so it's not that big of a deal. I know it is a big deal when it happens, but I'm not too worried about it because I always have second bodies anyway in the bag. So that's not really that big of a deal for me. So this is going to be a great B camera. It's going to be a great travel camera. It's going to be a great vlogging camera, hybrid camera, content creation camera. And that's what I believe this was for. Um, is this a great camera for those that are getting into the Sony lineup? I think it could be. I think it's going to give you all the latest and greatest feature sets that you may be interested in dipping your toe into. And that's kind of the reason why you buy a Sony, right? Is because you want that high-end technology, the cutting edge feature set that is very rich within Sony cameras. And I think this is giving you a good entry point into that. Gives you that, um, you know, interchangeable lens feature like other cameras do not give you. I think it's a fantastic camera for street photography because it is very small. It's very, you know, compact, just like the, uh, like a Q series. It, it's a even, even a little smaller than that. It's probably about the size of a, of an X pro series. Um, and definitely along the lines of a, an a 6,600 crop sensor, but here you have a full sensor, 33 megapixels. So again, um, I think it's great. If um, you enjoy my photography, if you like the way I color my photos, you can get the presets that I use right down below in my store. You'll see them lined up on the bottom here. Um, that'll bring you right to my website. 
join the website. I'm giving away free presets right there just by joining the website. And you might even get a little surprise in the email afterwards if you sign up. Um, but I also have some information on the blog and things like that. And I'm always open to comments and questions. So please like and subscribe, comment below. Anyway, guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope it kind of gave you a different look as opposed to some of the other content you're seeing out there on the A7C Mark II. I know I'm a little late in the game because I wasn't one of Sony's invitees to get the camera first. But as always, guys, thank you for watching the video and making it to the end. Congratulations to you. And uh, I really look forward to bringing you more content about this camera. So until then, have a good one.